place. And so tonight I'm going to teach uh, about what cleansing is. And then tomorrow evening I'll teach a little bit. And then we're going to pray uh, healing and cleansing prayers over you. Amen. And you're going you're gonna to participate. You're going to be a part of that. And so we have these booklets for you. And th those are for you to keep. Uh, so you take them home. And like uh, your pastor was saying, get in the booklets. Continue to read them. And also in the back there's CDs for you. That, and you can have those. There's different uh, teachings. And we do have a mailing list. And we send a lot of CDs out into the reservation and the Navajo Nation and different places. And we just, every three months, we just send teachings uh, into the people. And they've been really blessed by them. And they're growing. And they're, uh, and God is good. And that's what we need. We need to be taught how to do what Jesus did. Amen. Right? Amen. We're supposed to do greater works. We're supposed Amen. to do what he did in the earth. And so... Um, you're called to do that. If you're in here and you're saved, you're born again, you can be empowered by Holy Spirit to do the things that Jesus did. Amen. And so many times what hinders us from doing what Jesus did is strongholds. Have you ever heard of a stronghold? Mm -hmm. A stronghold is a place in you that is um, that where a spirit rules or a wrong way of thinking or a, maybe it's an, a bondage or an addiction or depression, something, or maybe something in your bloodline that I'm going to talk about tonight. Areas that hinder you. Fear could be a stronghold. A lot of people are afraid of fear. A lot of people are angry. A lot of bitterness. Those kind of things, you know, they hinder you. They will hinder you and keep you from walking in your purpose and your destiny. And so let's talk about what spiritual cleansing is, okay? You can go to page 2 in your book. Um, James 5, 6 says, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. And so spiritual cleansing is nothing new. It is, the, it is walking through or doing the finished work of Jesus. And so it is a cleaning out of that which is not like Jesus. Maybe you're in here and you have a problem with your, with your tongue. Maybe you're cursing and you have profanity. Maybe uh, there's perversions or lust or adultery, things like that that you're struggling uh, with and it's a bondage in your heart and it, it draws you and makes you do sin behavior. And so if there's places in you, a lot of a sorrow, people in the church have a lot of sorrow, a lot of pain. Many in the church today are on uh, medications and a lot of anxiety and those kind of things. And so Jesus can heal you. He can set you free. Many people get uh, set free from uh, sicknesses and infirmity spirits uh, in their bodies, okay? And, and God frees them. He sets them free and healing comes to their body. And so it is, it is a process that takes place in the soul and many times in the body with physical healing. And so uh, even uh, Joanne set through the cleansing and God was breaking things off of her, some oppression and some sicknesses, and then healing came to her. And so whenever we get rid of uh, the spirits in our bloodline or generational curses and, and cycles of behavior, you see a lot in uh, the Navajo Nation, a lot of young people, uh, suicidal, alcoholism, drug addictions, all of those things, that's the work of the enemy. That's the work of Satan. People are in, chained up with spirits and they need to be set free. And so after these, even though it's two days, after these two days, I'm believing God that you're going to get a revelation. You're going to get understanding on how to help people. Amen. Right? That's what we want. And so a lot of people need inner healing. If you're in here and you have a lot of pain in your heart and you cry a lot and you you have been abused when you were a child maybe uh, molested or maybe raped or uh, left or abandoned any kind of pain or trauma we call it trauma any kind of pain or trauma from childhood that could be a stronghold in your heart 
or a doorway for in the enemy to come in. And so we see many people get healed of traumas and get healed of pain. Jesus is the healer. Amen. 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 He is the healer. He loves to heal his people. Yes. Okay, he loves to do it. And so that's what we believe God and that's what will happen to you on these two days. And so cleansing is getting rid of or casting out unwanted demonic spirits, okay, that are oppressing your life. And so today, if you're in here and you are born again and you've received Jesus Christ as your Savior, okay, and you, you've let Him come into your heart, you've confessed, you've repented of sins, and he, came, he came in and His Spirit is inside of you, okay? And so when Christians get born again, that's just the beginning of new life. And so we need to be cleansed in our minds, we need, to, we need Jesus to come in and set us free in the area of our thoughts, how we think, right? Bad thoughts need to go. Um, things in our, the way we think, how we speak, all of those things. And so deliverance takes place in the area of your soul, which is, if you um, turn the page here, so I'm just laying a little foundation for you tonight. But deliverance takes place in the soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, page 9. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. Okay, those things can be damaged because of sin. Sin brings damage to us. Sin that someone did against you, could have wounded you, could have hurt you. Or sin doors that you open, things you have done can cause... Uh, demons to traffic your life or to come into your life and so in the area of the soul you're going to find deliverance this um, tomorrow okay and even right now he's working I see it happening <laughs> right now he's cleansing you God is so good. Is good you know why he's doing it because he loves you that's right his love for us is so perfect and so that's what happens is that that the anointing comes in, and Isaiah 10, 27 said it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Mm -hmm. And so the anointing is here, and the anointing is working, and it's working in your heart right now, and it's beginning to break some things in Jesus' name. Yes. And so it says in Mark 7, 25, Jesus said, in the top of your book here, Jesus said that deliverance is the children's bread. That means that if you're a child of God, Jesus said, that's your bread. You have a right to be delivered. Amen. You have a right to be healed. You have a right to receive miracles. <laughs> that's exciting, isn't it? And so we're going to believe God that that happens. And so it's no different today. Jesus went around and the, they called them synagogues, which was churches back in the Bible. We're going to read some stories here in a minute. But he went around in, in synagogues and he cast demons out of people that were in church. Yeah. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. oh. Everywhere in church. Yes. Uh huh. Oh. Synagogues and church. Amen. And so Jesus would be up teaching and, and demons would manifest in the people. Uh huh. And Jesus cast them out. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so today in the church, we don't cast out demons too much anymore. Mm -hmm. We think when we get saved that it's already done and we're already perfect and we don't have any spirits and we don't have any problems. Well, the devil is a liar. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's why there's so much sickness in the church yeah that's why there's so much bondage in the church mm -hmm. that's why in church there's a lot of uh secret sins and bondages that people do in their house mm -hmm. is because they need delivered yes right they need deliverance and so we have to get back to teaching all of the gospel mm -hmm. not just a part of it but all of it and Amen. a part of the gospel of jesus christ is deliverance Amen. and healing and it works together mm -hmm. and so in, in 2 Corinthians 5 17 it says therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creature the old things are passed away and behold all things have become new so upon salvation our spirit is made new as the Spirit of God indwells within us and we become a new creature 
Amen. So that means that I'm born again by the Spirit of God. <laughs> in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24, it says, And may the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body. Three parts right there. Yeah. Paul said, I want your spirit, your soul, and your body to be preserved blameless or to become perfect until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, faithful is he who called you also. He will do it. Yes. Amen? Amen? He desires to do it because he wants you to receive everything that he has for you. And so if we were made instantly whole upon salvation in our soul and our body, we would be immediately right then perfect. I wouldn't have any bad thought. I would never get sick. Amen. I wouldn't have any issues. And so that means that God's trying to tell us something. That wholeness is in our spirit. All right. And so we know as a child of God that we got some issues. If we be honest, there's a lot of people that lie in church. There's a lot of people that steal. There's a lot of people still have a lot of bondage. And so whoever I yield myself servants to obey in Romans 6 and 7, it talks about becoming a slave to that. And so when you continue to sin in an area in your life, that means that you continue to break God's safe boundaries. God gave us safe boundaries as a child of God. And if I continue to break God's boundaries and break God's law and sin in an area... After a while, that sin nature gets in my heart or in my soul, and now I become a slave to that. Okay? And so you're talking, say, say someone <coughs> likes to tell little lies. There's no such thing as a little lie. <laughs> okay? It's a lie. Yeah, white lie, someone said. It's a lie, period. It's just a lie. And so if I tell a lie and I ask God to forgive me, all right, he, he is faithful and just when I repent. He forgives me and He washes me. But if every day I continue to tell lies and I know better and I continue to tell lies, it could be any kind of sin, okay? But I'm using this as an example because it's, it's, it's a simple example. But if I continue uh, to lie... After a while, that lying nature or that lying spirit gets in my heart and now everybody knows I'm a liar. And people won't trust anything I say. So what happened? I kept sinning in that area and a lying spirit has a right to come into me and become a part of me. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. And so how do I break these wrong behaviors, wrong thinking? I confess, as I read in the beginning, I repent. I come out of agreement with that lying spirit. And I recognize I'm, I'm not supposed to be a liar. Jesus saved me. He, he's here to deliver me. And so then, guess what? Jesus is the strong man. He defeated Amen. every single spirit that troubles your life. Yes. Every single demon spirit that oppresses you, Jesus Christ defeated it. And Colossians 1 and 2 talks about Jesus defeated the devil. Right? He died on the cross, sinless. The Bible says he resurrected, he rose from the dead. He made a public display and he mocked every spirit, principality and power. Everything became subjected to him. Amen. And guess what? You're in him. You're born again, so you're in Christ. And so Jesus already defeated whatever is controlling you, whatever sickness is in your body. Jesus already defeated it. And so that's Amen. what cleansing is. It's getting rid of that stuff. It's, it's commanding those things to go from you because it has no legal right to you. If you don't want it, it cannot stay. That's right. That's it. But like one of my brothers was saying, you have to get tired of the enemy. You have to get tired of being sick. you gotta get, you got to get uh, tired of oppression. Amen. You need some joy. 
right? Yeah. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and He can release joy, but we have to get the sorrow and the pain out. Because, yeah. you know, and we know, we, we go across, uh, you know, in the Navajo Nation, and, and the people have a lot of pain in their heart from things from the past, from uh, all the traumas and, and things that were done to you. And like uh, Pete was saying, my brother Pete was saying, you got to forgive. You got to forgive the people of their ignorance. You got to forgive them from what they've done to you. And once you forgive them, then healing can come to your heart. Mm -hmm. Healing can come. And you have to forgive yourself for the things that Jesus already forgave you for. We were blessed to go into a rehabilitation center in Gallup. Uh, the other night and just love on the, the people and, and talk to them about Jesus and pray for them. And what we found was that people were so unforgiveness, so much unforgiveness toward themselves. They hated themselves for being a, a addicts and for being on drugs and losing their families. And, and so when you try to pray for them and minister to them because they did not uh, forgive themselves. Many of them couldn't receive healing from Jesus. They, would, they were holding back. But once we got them to forgive themselves, man, it was awesome. The, the Spirit of God just came in and touched those people. They began to cry. What did they do? They became vulnerable. They, they opened their heart and they forgave themselves and then then Jesus came in and touched them. And then he, he healed them. And so that's how we have to be. We have to come like a child and open up our heart and let the Lord touch hurting places. And that's what he's doing all over uh, your nation. He's healing people and they're forgiving everyone and they're forgiving themselves. And then the power of God can flow through, uh, through your life. We need the power of God, don't we? We need God's power to come and change the nation, and it's working right now. It's happening because of, like they were saying, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. People are what they're they're repenting of sin. They're turning from wickedness. You know all those steps that God tells us to do, and He's doing it. If you obey Jesus, He does His part. Amen. His love for you is perfect. We know what I call that. I partner with Him. <laughs> I set my heart to do the best I can, and then there's grace that covers me. But God's looking at the heart tonight. He looks inside our heart. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Hebrews 4. Thank you, Jesus. He looks inside. His love for us is perfect. So let's go to Hebrews 12 first. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 14, it says, Pursue peace with all men and the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. He says, See to it that no one comes short of the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by it many are defiled. And so we cannot allow bitterness to get in our heart. Bitterness, unforgiveness, uh, resentment, like we can't want to get revenge on people. We have to release and forgive people. And so God wants to deal with areas in your heart where you have unforgiveness. Places in your heart where you're still angry at your brother. Or maybe angry at um, someone else or a family member or another tribe maybe. Another clan. All of those things you have to release and forgive so God can come in and heal you. It's, Jesus said, unless you don't forgive, he says, your Father in heaven will not forgive you. And so every single person that says they're a child of God must forgive. We must release the people for, that hurt us. We have to do it. Even all the way back from childhood pain, you must forgive your parents. You've got to forgive everybody that has ever hurt you. And then the Lord will come in. Go back to chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. And the Holy Spirit is so awesome. He'll begin to show you people that you're angry with. People that you have unforgiveness with. He'll show you the people that have hurt you. And when He shows you those people, you just have to release them. 
because he knows what's in your heart tonight. He knows. So in Hebrews chapter 4, it says in verse, let's go to verse 12. It says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and the marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And so we know that John tells us that Jesus is the Word of God, right? The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus. And it says that the Word of God is living and active. So the Word of God knows how to go in. Jesus knows how to go into your heart right now and separate your soul and your spirit. He knows of both the joints and the marrow. And that word marrow, that means that in our blood, in our bloodline, Jesus can go down where the bloodline is made, where blood is made. And it says he's able to judge the thoughts and intentions of your heart. Jesus can see everything. He says there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of Jesus with whom we have to do. And so that word creature right there, the original word creature means that there is no spirit in your bloodline right now that Jesus cannot see. And all the way back, you heard them talk about all the way back to Adam, all the way back from the beginning, Jesus can see down inside of our ancestors, our bloodline, all the way back. And he knows Whatever creature is hiding inside there, okay? He knows if there's any legal rights to the enemy to cause you to be sick. He knows if there's any kind of, uh, any kind of formation. Whatever is causing your sickness, Jesus can see it. Amen. Yeah. And so that's what that scripture is talking about. Jesus going down into our generations. Everybody needs a generational cleansing. Amen. Not just Native American people. Every single person that has been born needs their bloodline cleansed. Amen. 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 Because those things hinder us in our life. And so Jesus can see it. That's why the writer put morrow in there. Because he's talking about a bloodline. He's talking about uh, all the things that have hindered us and snared us. You may go uh, to a doctor and they'll, they'll ask, at least they do, they'll ask us what is in our family bloodline. What kind of sicknesses are in your family? Did your mother have diabetes? You know, did your dad have a heart disease? The doctors ask you that. Why? Because they know that nat and naturally you could inherit some sicknesses. Well, I'm here to tell you spiritually we inherit demons, spirits, from our ancestors and from our family line. Thank God for Jesus. He Amen. breaks the curse. In Galatians 3, 13 and 14, it says, Jesus redeemed us from the curse. Amen. Right? Of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is anyone that hangs on a tree. So what are we doing in cleansing? We're applying, we're applying that scripture, the word of truth against the curses in our bloodline. Mm -hmm. And we're breaking them. We're commanding those things to go. We're commanding any ordinance, any legal right to sickness, anything that's hiding in my body. Any, any spirit that's uh, hiding in there. A lot of spirits hide in bodies. They'll hide in organs. They will hide in your, you know, and, and then I don't, just sometime, sometime in your life, they'll begin to show themselves. All of a sudden, you may get a, a diagnosis from a doctor that you have something that was in the family bloodline. Okay, well, I'm here to tell you it was already there. It was there hiding in your marrow, hiding in the blood, because Leviticus says life of the flesh is in the blood. 
life of all flesh. It's living. It's inside of you. That's how they know who you are. They can do DNA testing and see all kinds of things about you. Well, Jesus already did that. The Bible was already written. It says he, he can look down inside and see things that's in there. And so we thank God that he frees us. Amen. Hallelujah. So we need to know what the legal right is. Jesus will uh, tell us. He wants you to be well. See, when you become saved, the word salvation means, it says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word saved, the word salvation, means to be whole. Mm -hmm. It's what it means. It means to be whole. It means to be delivered. It means to be healed. It means to be rescued from the enemy. Well, if I'm bound in depression or sorrow of heart or I have addictions and bondages to all these things, I'm not whole. <laughs> There's something in me that needs to be healed. There's something that needs to be fixed by Jesus or something that needs to be cast out of me. And so the word cast out means uh, to throw out forcefully. <laughs> That's what it means. And so people don't want to, the people, a lot of people in church don't like that. Um, they don't like it, but it's the truth. It means to be, uh, to, to throw out. It means to, that means that Jesus comes in and he, he throws and he casts that thing out. Jesus hated the devil. You should too. Jesus hated demons, didn't he? He was not nice to them. No, he wasn't. He, couldn't, he hated it that the people were oppressed. Why? Because he loved them so much. Amen? And so he's the same Jesus today. <laughs> he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And so let's read some scriptures about deliverance tonight. Let's go to uh, Mark 1. Let's just read the Bible. That's what we do. We just teach the Bible. Because <laughs> the truth, Bible says you will know the truth, and the truth will what? Make you free. And so it's bringing understanding. Just because you may never experience deliverance or, or seen it, it's real. Amen. Mark 1, 39. It says, And Jesus went into their synagogues, in Mark chapter 1, throughout all Galilee, preaching and casting out demons. Remember I told you a synagogue was church. And it says, And a leper came to Jesus, beseeching him and falling on his knees before him and saying, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was moved with compassion. And Jesus stretched out his hand and he touched him. And he said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Amen. Amen. Yes. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And he sternly warned him and immediately sent him away. So you see... When you're reading this, Jesus is always moved with compassion. The real Jesus is going to set you free. He's going to heal bodies because that's who he is. That's a part of who Amen. Jesus is. And so he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And so let's go to Luke 13. All these are on page 12. Look. Just some scriptures. So, and you notice Jesus always was willing. So if you're in here tonight and you think Jesus doesn't care about you, the devil is a liar. If you're in here tonight and you think Jesus doesn't want you healed, the devil is a liar. Or if you think that thing that's troubling your heart is too big for God or too big for Jesus, again, the devil is a liar. <laughs> Don't let him deceive you and tell you that you cannot get delivered. All right, in Luke 13, chapter, uh, let's go to verse 10. It says, and he was, Jesus was teaching in the synagogues on the Sabbath. Now here he is again in the church, he's teaching. And there was a woman who for 18 years had a sickness caused by a spirit. You see that? Her sickness in her body was caused by a demon spirit. And she was bent over and she couldn't straighten up at all. So she had a crippling spirit in her body. And it says, when Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed or loosed from your sickness. And then he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made erect again and began glorifying God. 
And in the synagogue, of, but the synagogue official was angry. He was indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. He began saying to the crowd in response, there are six days in which work should be done, so come during them and get healed and not on the Sabbath. How silly is that? That's that religious spirit. Mm -hmm. And then it says, but the Lord answered and said to him, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from his stall and lead him away to water him? And this woman, a daughter of Abraham, as she is, whom Satan has bound her for 18 long years. You see that? He said, should she not have been released from this bond or this captivity, these chains? She was chained up to this spirit. 18 long years of suffering. And Jesus said all of that and his opponents were being humiliated. And the entire crowd was rejoicing over all the glorious things that were done by him. So when deliverance comes, it brings great joy. Amen. When those demons get cast out, it brings joy to a people. It brings joy and hope to people when chains are broken. And she had this for 18 years. And so Jesus cast the spirit out and then he healed her. And so deliverance, healing and deliverance works together. Many times, not all the time, but many times, there are demon spirits behind sickness, behind diseases, behind, we call them infirmity spirits. And we cast those things out, and then the healing power of God can come and flow through bodies. Jesus did it all the time. Some people got deliverance, and then they got healed. So it was two parts, wasn't it? And so that's why in the mass cleansings they're so powerful is because we get, the Lord comes in and he breaks the curses off after you renounce and repent the sins of all your forefathers and sins you have done and legal rights are now broken because you've confessed and you've repented. Now the devil is shaken. He knows he has to go. And once you do that, then Jesus comes in and he frees you and the demons go out of the way so healing anointing can flow. Amen. That's how it works. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it works like that. And so people say, why do you do, you know, we get the, get the, the infirmity spirits, get all those things out so healing can flow because what I find is that if you, a lot of pastors in here, if you pray for people, and you keep praying healing and healing and they're not getting healed, there's a reason for that. And most of the time, people in the, the religious spirit will blame the person. Well, you just must not want to be healed. You don't have enough faith. Well, they came to Jesus many times and they had little faith. <laughs> and they would say, help my unbelief. So it ain't, that's not the problem, okay? They wouldn't be asking you for prayer if they didn't have any, right? And so what it is, it's usually some kind of spirit is there blocking or hindering, stopping that anointing. A curse is like a long, evil um, hook, you could say. And so if, if it, all of a sudden people be doing well in life and they, they, you know, do pretty good, they might even get prayer and they're working, you know, they're walking it out, and all of a sudden, they, bam, fall back into bondage. They fall back into addiction. They fall back into uh, perversion or a sin behavior. It's because there's some kind of curse, some kind of evil spirit that's in them that needs to be broken. And so it, it, it'll, it'll pull them back into bondage. And so you need to understand that. And if people are praying for people and they're not getting healed, break curses and command spirits to go. And then release healing anointing out of your hands. Jesus said we will lay hands on the sick and they would recover. Amen. Amen. You have Holy Spirit. You have some power inside of you. Praise God. You got the same power that raised Christ from the dead. Amen. He dwells within you. Boy, that should get you excited. It excites me when I say that. Why? Because I know he's in there. And he desires to heal people. So when we when we learn these te these things, these are like these are a, this is like a toolbox. 
You know, you have you have tools in there and things that you need to build something and to, to do something for Jesus. This is a tool for you to get an understanding in Jesus' name. So thank the Lord. Amen. So let's go to Mark 9. Let's keep reading the Bible here. <coughs> and most of those spirits that hide in there are generational things. It's something that your ancestors opened the door to sin and they didn't have understanding about spiritual things. They didn't know that they were inviting demons to come into the family line. And so now we're getting understanding all across the earth. Deliverance ministries are just popping up and God is bringing them forth again because he has to get his church ready because Jesus is coming back. Amen. Amen. And it says what? For a church without spot or wrinkle. He wants us to be ready for him. Amen. And so in Mark chapter 9, it says in um, verse 14, And when they came back to the disciples, they saw a large crowd around them, and some scribes arguing with them. Immediately when the entire crowd saw Jesus, they were amazed and began running up to greet him. And he asked them, What are you discussing with them? And one of the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought you my son, possessed with a spirit which makes him mute. So you see this demon spirit is stole the boy's speech. Okay, that's what demons do. They come to steal, kill, and destroy your life. Your health, your happiness, your prosperity, everything. Your peace of mind. Yeah, they're robbers and thieves. And so it says, and whatever, whenever it seizes him, it slams him to the ground, and, fo and he foams at the mouth, he grinds his teeth, and he stiffens out. I told your disciples to cast it out, and they could not do it. And he answered them, and he said, O oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. And so they brought the boy to Jesus, and when he saw him, Immediately the spirit threw him into a convulsion, and falling to the ground, he began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, now here, and you see the picture here. Jesus come down, and all the, the, this boy this, this starts manifesting a demon. The disciples were working with him, but they had unbelief. You know why? Because they looked at how hard it was. They were looking at the, the action of the Spirit. All right? And sometimes if we're not careful, we look at our circumstance or we look at our problem and we make the problem so big that we, we, give, we begin to have unbelief. We begin to think God can't change it or God can't fix it. So don't look at the natural. All right? Because Jesus already won. He already paid the victory. And so when they brought the boy to Jesus, the demon manifests because it was scared. So when demons start manifesting around you, it's, they don't let them scare you. What's happening is they are terrified. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know why? Because they know you have the power of God within you. They know you understand that Jesus is a deliverer and he lives inside of you. See, the devil hates deliverance ministries, and so they will try and stop deliverance ministries, and they do it all the time. Religious spirits hate it because it is a clash out in the open of light and dark, and it proves that the demons are defeated. Mm -hmm. See, that's why they don't like it. That's why churches sometimes they get mad if you talk about that. It's a religious spirit. And the same thing they did to Jesus, it was a religious spirit, always attacked him because what did they always say about Jesus? Where did this man get this, what? Authority. Mm -hmm. See, deliverance was the only miracle that the world had not seen. In the Old Testament, they saw many miracles, but the clash of darkness and light, that was demonstrated in the New Covenant. Okay? And it says, and he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, what? From childhood. <coughs> so that word childhood means this, this boy was born with this spirit. 
When he was born from a little baby, this spirit tormented him. And it says, it has often thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And so the father was saying that this spirit even came in when he was born. He had it and it was trying to murder him. It would try and throw him in the fire and the water. It wanted to drown him. It wanted to burn him up. So we call that a generational curse, an assignment against this boy. And it was wanting to kill him, is what it was doing. So there was some legal right for a child, some legal right of a demon was in this boy, in this baby. When it came out of its mother's womb, that spirit was in the baby. You see that? And it was on an assignment to kill him. Probably some kind of uh, a witchcraft, curse, of sacrifice. Something happened in the family line for this to happen. And it says, Jesus said to him, if you can, now you see the answer, all things are possible to him who believes. And immediately the boy's father cried out and said, I do believe, but help my unbelief. And he was saying, help my disobedience, help my distrust to you. He said, help me. And Jesus saw a crowd was rapidly gathering. He rebuked the unclean spirit. And he said to him, you deaf and mute spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. And crying out with and throwing him into terrible convulsions, when demons leave people, sometimes they will, they will act out the behavior in the person while they're leaving. Okay? And so witchcraft spirits a lot of times will scream out. And so we hear them scream out, but they're leaving. It's okay. They did it in Jesus' day, and they still going to do it today. Demons aren't any different. No, they still act the same way. And it says, and after crying out and throwing him into convulsions, he came out, and they and they and the boy became so much like a corpse. Most of them said he's dead. What happened? There was a release of the demon out of the boy, and his body shook, and it came out of his mouth. It came out of him, and then he he just passed out and rested. <laughs> Can you imagine being in chains your whole life? You know how tired and how that would make you feel, being bound up in chains? If you could see what demonic oppression and bondage looked like, it'd be putting someone up here and getting a bunch of chains and taking and just wrapping chains around their mind, all around their body, just wrapping them up with chains. That's how uncomfortable would that be? That's what bondage is. It's chains of the enemy, chains on your mind. Chains on your body. And so then it says, um, after crying out, okay, he delivered him. And Jesus took him by the hand and raised him up. And he got up. And then he came into the house. His disciples began questioning him privately. Why could we not drive it out? And he said to them, this kind, now this kind cannot come out but by anything but prayer and, and fasting. And I believe that's very true. Genos, that word kind means a generational curse one of those strong generational spirits Jesus was telling his disciples you need to pray and fast he was telling them and he's telling us today pastors and leaders and people of God that we need to have a lifestyle of fasting amen amen we don't just wait till we have a delivered session and fast we should have a lifestyle of pushing the plate back and spending time with Jesus because it builds up our what? Faith. Fasting will undo your unbelief. Man, we need to live a life like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what he's saying. This, that word kind means generational. This generational spirit, you better fast. Why? Because it looks to the natural eye, it looks hard, doesn't it? It looks so difficult that the boy's father cried out and said, Help me believe you, Jesus. Help me believe. And so, as Christians, many times, things in our life can be so hard. 
Amen. They can look so bad. Our children, situations. Maybe you have children that are, you know, drug addicts or maybe in rehabs or whatever. You know, or a spouse that's abusive or something. And, you know, that they, you know they need deliverance from demons. It can look so hard. And so we need to, we need to practice the things that Jesus showed us. Jesus Christ will always be your perfect model to be a Christian. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ. You have many mentors. You have many leaders. Read and study about Jesus. Right? He's perfect. The way Jesus ministered to people was perfect. You cannot improve on a deliverance model. People try and do it all the time. There's one model that's perfect, and that's Jesus. Amen. It's very controversial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, people won't like you much sometimes <laughs> unless they understand in their kingdom like you, and they get it. But, but, it's, but it's because it works. It's a working model. Jesus is perfect. Amen. That's exciting, isn't it? So he gives us stories to teach us and to show us and examples in the Bible. The word of truth. Amen. So we have to get back in the word of truth. Matthew 8. And so maybe you have a hard place and maybe there's something so difficult that you just you don't know Jesus can do it. Fast a little bit. Pray and fast. Set aside some time uh, with the Lord in that area. Amen. In Matthew 18, or what did I tell you? Matthew 8, thank you. Matthew 8. Thank you, Lord. You're just, you're just building faith. Why? Say, why are you doing it this way? Because I'm releasing faith. <laughs> I'm releasing the Word because the Word's going to go into your heart and it's going to produce a great harvest. Matthew 8, 14. When Jesus came into Peter's home, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick in a bed with a fever. Jesus touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she got up and waited on him. When evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and he healed all who were sick. You see that? There he goes again. He's casting out spirits. He's releasing healing. And how did he cast them out? With the word. His mouth. <laughs> he commanded them. He rebuked them. He, he told them they had to go. And, and they obeyed Jesus. And the demons, when you know Jesus in your heart, and he's in there, the Bible says that believers will cast out spirits. Cast out demons, right? Because we believe in Jesus. And we have a relationship with Jesus. And we understand who He is and what He did. And He empowers us to do His works. And He says, This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. He Himself took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. <laughs> and so it says he, he took them, right? Isaiah 53 talks about that. Everything we need from top of our head to the sole of our feet... Everything Jesus fixed for us. He demonstrated that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's find another one here. God is so good. Go to Acts chapter 8. This was a Simon the Sorcerer. This was a man that got saved and still needed deliverance. In Acts chapter 8, verse 9, it says, There was a man named Simon who formerly was practicing magic in the city and astonishing the people of Samaria, mm -hmm. claiming to be someone great. <laughs> and they all, from the smallest to the greatest, were giving attention to him, saying, This man is what is called the great power of God. And they were giving him attention because he had for a long time astonished them with his magic arts. And I want you to think about... Uh, your culture about you know uh, people that practice witchcraft medicine men and medicine women and all of those things you know the witchcraft that goes on astonishing people with magic with spells with uh, curses rituals all of those kind of things right here and it says so let's go to verse um, 
12, it says, But when they believed Philip's preaching the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were being baptized, men and women alike. Even Simon, who was a sorcerer, okay, himself believed the message of Jesus, and after being baptized, he, com he continued on with Philip, as he has observed signs and great miracles taking place, he was constantly amazed. <coughs> now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them, that they might receive Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen upon any of them, and they had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. It says, Then they began laying hands on them, and they were receiving Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw the Spirit was bestowed through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this authority as well, so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive Holy Spirit. Now you have to understand, Jesus gives us authority. Amen? We can't get that from anybody else. He delegates this kind of authority to his children as he chooses. And it says, But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have no part or portion in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Therefore repent of this wickedness of yours and pray the Lord that if possible the intention of your heart, that his mind, his soul was corrupted still, may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bondage of iniquity. That word's right there. This means that he was chained to Simon the sorcerer. Even though he believed the message of Jesus and was baptized. Listen to that. In his mind, he was still chained in bondage to a place of fettering souls of witchcraft. He still had that in him. He needed deliverance from his old life. I rem uh, we minister to many um, people that used to practice some of the native traditions and the different things of medicine men practices and things like that. I recall a story um, several years back of a pastor that um, he used to practice medicine men um, practices. And in his family, his brothers, he told us that story after his deliverance or actually before his deliverance, we were working with him. But his brothers, they were all uh, medicine men. And he had gotten born again. And he had a church now, but he was sick in his body. And he had um, some kind of boot on his leg. Um, and he showed us a picture. We didn't see what was under the boot, but he had some kind of uh, disease or something in on his leg, and he had issues in his kidneys and possible uh, cancer, just he was sick. He was very sick. But he was preaching the gospel, he was a good man. Loved Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, all right? But because he had never been cleansed from the practices of witchcraft, and then his brothers, he said, was, was cursing him because he had gotten born again and he had left those, those traditional medicine men practices. And so we, we prayed with him and the Lord broke all the ties, the soul ties, the witchcraft ties that was connected to him from his family line, his bloodline. He inherited some things and he also practiced it. And so while he was practicing those things, demons entered in his body. It's true. Demons come in to, through sin doors and especially through witchcraft or sexual perversion. They will contaminate your body and your mind. And so whenever he got born again and got saved, you know the devil was mad. He lost him. <laughs> he lost the medicine man. He got born again. Now he's preaching truth. Praise God. And more of them are coming in in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, sir. And so anyway, he came into the truth, but now those same demons were afflicting his body with sickness. Why? Because a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So they didn't want him to live in health and peace and blessing. And so we had to go in and the Lord delivered him and broke those things off of him. 
and he felt the power of God after he got his deliverance and all those demons came out and, and God broke off the ties and sent curses back off of him. He had a right to be free. He had a right, but he didn't understand that the sin doors that were opened in his family and in his life were causing him to be sick and afflicted. And then the power of God came over the man and he felt uh, manifestations of healing all in his body. He told us, he said he felt uh, heat all down where the, the sore was. And he felt uh, all that God was just working all in his body. Praise God. Amen. Healing could flow then. So all those demons were blocking the anointing from going in because of the doors that he opened. So thank God. And how did he do that? He renounced even though he had been preaching the gospel, okay, he had been getting people saved and probably healing folks himself. But he was sick himself because of the demons hiding in his body, because of all the witchcraft. And so Ephesians tells us, give no place to the devil. That's Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Give no place. And so God broke the rights. We see that a lot uh, in people's lives. We were blessed uh, to go into Hispanic churches. It's not just, you know, it's every church needs cleansing. If people have practiced witchcraft, sorcery, divination, you know, all those things, if they've done that and they've worshipped idols and all of those things and their, their ancestors did those things and shed innocent blood, there needs to be a cleansing. There needs, we need to cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates our body and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen? Amen. And so it's, you don't have to be ashamed of that. See, there is no shame in, in, in the kingdom. When Jesus comes in, Romans says, we don't work, there's no guilt or condemnation.